what is going on everybody welcome back to your sixth C++ tutorial and I know I have been gone for a while but I have been busy I have been on vacation and I have been working on my website which is finally up for all of you guys who have been telling me to make a website get all my videos organized and uh, so anyways I've been listening to you guys I did it all of my videos are organized on my website thenewboston.com I'll tell you about it later but for now we have to make some C++ tutorials so if you've been watching my last tutorials you will notice that a couple things are different first of all we have a new compiler I read the comments in my old videos about me using an old compiler and that it wasn't up to date and that's just because that old compiler is the one I grew up learning so I was familiar with it I love that compiler but since you guys want an up-to-date compiler I downloaded code blocks so I think that's the name of the compiler I'm using now it's supposed to be up-to-date you know a better C++ compiler another thing is I'm now using C I N C N get instead of system pause and this pretty much does the same thing it waits for user input so your program just doesn't run it pauses it and allows you to look at it so the reason I was using system pause is Whenever I first started teaching you guys about C++, none of this stuff made sense to you. And system pause was the only thing you could look at and understand. And it said, this paused my system. So instead of throwing everything at you at once, I wanted to take everything in baby steps. And that's why if you guys say, all right, why are you doing this instead of a better way of doing this? It's because I just want to take everything in baby steps one step at a time. So anyways that's my excuses for doing that but everything is fixed now so with that being said in the last tutorial we covered the basics of functions and how to use the functions that are built in to C++ already and we pretty much covered one type of function and this was a function that took one parameter or needed one piece of information in order to work but not all functions are like that some functions need more than one piece of information in order to work and some functions need no information at all and you're saying alright how the heck does that work I'll show you in a second for example let's go ahead and get a variable name X or as one guy left the comment double rainbow huh yeah I saw that joke from someone else on my uh, other videos so I can't take credit for this but anyways we have this variable named rainbow and we want to use the power of function so let's go ahead and set rainbow equal to pow and set it equal well let me guys let me tell you guys first what the power of function is whenever you do like five to the third power um I can't it's like five with a little three on the top right this means five times five times five five times itself three times so what is five times five times five well five times five that's two is 25 times the third one is a hundred and twenty five so we're saying alright so in order for us to use this function it obviously needs two numbers aka two pieces of information the first one is the base and the second one is the exponent so how do we pass in two different numbers using the parameters well the first thing we do is type in any old number and this like we saw in the last tutorial this is how you pass in one piece of information but when you have more than one piece of information you need to pass in a function what you need to do is separate it with a comma and then add another number it doesn't matter if there's a space in there or not so I might as well tighten that up so anyways if you have a function that takes two integers in this instance just go ahead and throw in your first one like normal and then add a comma and throw in your second one after that so anyways what I'm trying to say is anytime you need more than one piece of information for your function you need to separate them with commas and just to prove to you guys that this works let's go ahead and see out um, rainbow and just go ahead and end that line and yep looks pretty good so let's go ahead and build and run this and so we get 125 and that's because 5 times 5 times 5 is 125 so that's how the power function works or you know 
using exponents. So let's go ahead and delete this. Actually, let's just go ahead and delete this. And remember at the beginning of the tutorial, I was telling you guys, some functions don't need any information at all. And you guys were scratching your head like, what's the use of a function if it doesn't need any information? Well, I'll show you guys right here. Let's go ahead and make another function or another variable right now called y. And set this equal to y equals rand. And just put empty parentheses. This function is not going to take any parameters. And by the way, RAND comes from C standard library. It's a C function. So make sure you have this include or else it won't work. So we're saying, all right, what is RAND and why the heck does it not need any parameters at all? RAND is the function to generate a random number. It's going to generate it in the scope of, well, we won't cover that now, but just listen to this it's going to generate a random number so why would you pass it in a piece of information like 5 or 81 it doesn't need that information that would just be you generating your own random number that pops into your head we want the computer to generate it for us so therefore we don't give it any information at all the computer is going to take care of everything for us so let's go ahead and uh, run this and go ahead leave a comment see what number you think this is go ahead don't cheat don't cheat. All right, now go ahead and run it and see if you're right. 41. So if any of you mofos guess 41, congratulations. You are the winner. And uh, give me a call. I think I'm going to have you pick my Powerball tickets next time. So anyways, random, or excuse me, functions sometimes take one parameter. They sometimes take multiple parameters. In that case, you separate them with commas. And sometimes they don't take any parameter at all. They just pretty much do something and don't need any information from the user or from the programmer or for anyone. They just do it. It's done with. Forget about it. So anyways, now that we have all of the functions covered and we understand how built-in functions work, in the next tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to build your own custom functions so it's going to be awesome we are done with built-in functions for now um, it's definitely a lot cooler and more useful building our own custom functions because then instead of you know using random numbers and powers we can make these new functions do whatever the heck we want them to so I'm super excited but for now I'm gonna go uh, check eBay because I'm selling something on there and I wanna you know see if I got any questions or anything thing but um Alright, I lied. I'm just going to pound a few beers and then probably make another tutorial. But thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.